Hi friends, Krista here. Thank you so much for stopping by Books and Jams. Today I'm going to talk about my massive amount of books that I read in the month of April. Crazy! I think there are 17 books that I read all together in the month of April and I had four on my TBR. I would say that mood reading went pretty well for me. <laughs> My goal for April was to really scale back on the books that I was telling myself that I had to read and just allow myself to pick up whatever was kind of floating my boat in the moment and it worked really well for me. I already did a mid-month wrap up where I talked about these books so I'm going to show you them but I will link the, the video down below so if you want more information about any of these you can check out that video. But I read this The Lost for Words Bookshop, The Lost or Just Lost for Words by Stephanie Butland. Alessia in Atlantis by Natalie Lane, The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna, The Duke and I by Julia Quinn, The Paris Library by Janet Gelslian Charles, probably said that wrong, In Five Years by Rebecca Searle, and True to You by Becky Wade, Majesty by Catherine McGee, and I did have one DNF at the beginning of the month, The Little French Bridal Shop by Jennifer Dupee. So those are the books that I already talked about, and so I'm not going to spend any time on them. <laughs> but I do have eight or nine more books to tell you about, so let's just jump right in. I did have one more DNF at the end of the month, and that is Smell Home by C.L. Williams. I'm really sad because this book is beautiful. I love the end papers. I love that it's a printed hardcover, and it was sent to me so kindly by the author, but it just wasn't working for me. I don't know if it was the timing or the writing style. I wasn't feeling connected to the characters and the plot wasn't moving quick enough for me. So I just didn't ever get drawn in. And there was every inter interspersed in between every couple chapters, there was this other perspective that I didn't know who was speaking. I didn't know what they were talking about. I was quite confused. So I ended up just not wanting to continue with that one. So sadly, Smell Home was a DNF for me. I did have some fantastic reads towards the end of the month, though. Fantastic. One of them was a middle grade called The Sea in Winter by Christine Day. Christine Day is one of the authors that Katie and Amanda and I were looking into when we were thinking about our group read for Middle Grade March. She is a an Indigenous author. Um, I don't know exactly what tribe she's from, but she wrote The Sea in Winter and uh, I Can Make This Promise, I believe is her other book. And I had heard such high praise for these, these books and I wanted to check them out. And so I read The Sea in Winter, which is about a young girl named Maisie who loves to dance. She finds her identity in dancing. She has a really hard time making friends at school, but her dance people in her dance class. The girls in her dance class are her best friends, but they don't all go to her school. Uh, but then because of an injury, she is no longer able to dance. And so now she has to try to figure out who she is without that aspect of her life. Um, she has really high hopes for wanting to dance again, but that doesn't look like it's going to be a possibility. It's just been a really a really difficult year for her. Her fam She's in a blended family and they were wonderful and supportive, but it really, um, it really delves into a little bit of mental health even as her anxiety and depression just start to spiral. And as much as she has this loving family, she can't seem to get a grip on, on her emotions and, and the loss that she feels and, and, and it becomes a real struggle for her. So this book deals with all of that and pretending to be something that you're not. I I ended up giving this book four stars. I thought it was lovely. I thought it was heartfelt and emotional. I felt connected to Maisie and her, her progression through the story. I thought the writing was beautiful and I definitely would be interested in reading more from Christine Day. It was lovely. One that was just okay for me was this I Will Judge You By Your Bookshelf by Grant Snyder. This should have been a super quick read because it's kind of like a collection of comics in here all to do with books and bookshelves and introversion and writing and everything that goes along with that. I did find some of them to be quite humorous and in the later section when it was dealing with writing I found a lot of stuff to go over my head because I am not a writer and so I wasn't really connecting with those comics per se but I did think that it was a fun just kind of cutesy read. I don't know it was just okay for me but this one just got three stars for me. It was fun but 
I'm done with it <laughs> and I don't need to own it. I think that was my only three star for the end of the month. I think everything else was a four or five star. Fabulous. I have one more that I don't have with me that I listened to on, on audio, as an audiobook, and that's Quintessence by Jess Redman. This is another one that was a uh, net galley book for me. I really enjoyed this story. I thought it was different and a little bit quirky. We follow a young girl named Alma who she knows, she recognizes that within her is this special uniqueness. And she doesn't always let that out for others to see. Um, and so she also has a hard time sometimes connecting with other people at school. Her family has just recently moved to a new town and she's just having a hard time finding a place to fit in. Along with the move, Alma starts to have these panic attacks. Because of these panic attacks, Alma starts to feel less and less like her true self. Her parents are very loving and helpful and they try to help her think of ways to get connected at school and to branch out a little bit and hopefully make new friends. Um, but she kind of tells them that the panic attacks have stopped, but they haven't. One day on the way home from school, she stops at the store and there's a shopkeeper there who's a little strange and his shop is like, it's a little bit of mishmash of everything. And he gives her this telescope, which is a quintoscope, which shows star power when you look through it. One night, Alma is looking out her window through the quintoscope and watches a shooting star fall into her backyard, basically. She goes out and tries to track it down. And the story kind of goes from there. Along the way, Alma meets a couple other friends who also don't fully fit in or don't fully feel like themselves in school. These three go on this quest to help this fallen star make her, her way its way back up into the heavens. Um, so it's 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 a little quirky and unique, but I love how it deals with mental health. I love how it deals with friendship. I love how it it teaches that everybody has within them this an individuality that makes everybody special and unique. I just it was I thought it was lovely. I ended up giving it four stars. It was a very sweet, very sweet story. I have another book by Jess Redmond, The Miraculous, on my shelves, and I cannot wait to read that one. I've heard such good things about that as well. Next, I will talk about The Star-Cross Sisters of Tuscany, which I read with Jamie, one of my subscribers and friends. And Jamie and I really enjoyed this story so much. I also ended up giving this one a four-star rating. I really love the story of this family. There were a couple moments at the beginning where it felt a little bit cheesy and it was a very lighthearted story overall. It did get into a little bit of emotion here and there, but overall it was a relatively lighthearted story, which I was in the mood for, so I was totally down with that. We mainly follow Amelia and her cousin Lucy and their Aunt Poppy as they travel to Italy. These three are unfortunately second-born sisters, which in this family is unfortunate because there was a curse placed on second-born sisters a couple generations ago where no second born sisters are ever going to find love or get married. Well, these three each deal with that curse in different ways, whether they believe it or not. And I really liked the journey that these three women took. Each of them, um, especially Lucy and Amelia, the younger, the younger ones, they each broke out of a shell that they had been placed under, whether by themselves or by the rest of their family in relation to this curse. And I really liked the journey that the two of them went on. And I loved the Aunt Poppy. She was my favorite character for sure in this book. I was really frustrated because there was a couple family members at home who really treated Amelia horribly. And I didn't feel like the resolution was justified. The reasoning behind things of be behind why they treated Amelia in such a way didn't feel like it was enough of a reason for that to happen. Uh, so I was a little frustrated with that. However, I just really enjoyed the story. I was very captivated by the writing. Aunt Poppy had some very quotable moments. I really did like Aunt Poppy's perspective on life and the the things that she teaches these two nieces of hers, um, Lucy and Amelia. Uh, so yeah, I really, I really did enjoy this book very much. Uh, the one thing that I need to say that really bothers me <laughs> is that for such a lighthearted story, I feel like the language in here was so unnecessary in particular. And I think I mentioned this in a vlog at one point. In particular, they use the name of Jesus as a swear word. And it happens at the very beginning quite a bit and then at the end. But in the middle, it's almost like there's no cursing. And it was totally fine. Why did we need it at the beginning and the end? I don't know. 
it was very frustrating to me because it was very jarring and it didn't seem to fit with the storyline at all and unnecessary swearing is a pet peeve of mine so there's that I read Miracle Creek this month with um, by Angie Kim with some of my patrons I think joined in for this one this was one of our choices that didn't get picked but I read it anyway and this was a favorite of so many people in 2019 or 2020 um, and I really did enjoy it. Uh, it is mainly a legal drama and we follow the Kim family who, not the Kim family, that's the author. Um, we follow a lot of different characters, which at the beginning was a little bit confusing, but Young and Pak Yu are a Korean couple and their daughter, Mary, they have, they run this, it's a basically a land driven submarine that they, it's like an oxygen tank, which is supposed to have some healing properties for many different medical issues, including things like autism and infertility and other situations. You go into this tank and you are pumped up with oxygen and it's supposed to help your body to respond in different ways. One day, a, a cigarette is lit outside one of the oxygen tanks and the submarine blow, blows up and two people die and a couple others are quite injured. And we follow the mystery the legal courtroom mystery of who did it and what happened and why. And everybody has lies. Everybody has secrets, whether it was people who were coming, clients who were coming to, to take part in the oxygen tank, the, whether it was the you family, Mary, the daughter had secrets, like everybody had secrets. And it was kind of fun uncovering them along the way. I was here for it. I thought the writing was beautiful. I was very interested all the way through. And it's very different from everything else that I've been reading lately. And I think that that was good. <laughs> I ended up giving it five stars. I thought it was great. Another five star read for me was Big Lies in a Small Town by Diane Chamberlain. Oh, she's most definitely one of my favorite authors now. This is the third book of hers that I've read and the third book that I've loved. This is a dual timeline dual perspective. We follow two women about 40 or 50 years apart, maybe even more than that. 1940 and then like 2000. Yeah, 50s, almost 60 years apart. 1940s and then to 2018. In our current day, 2018, we follow Morgan who has been in prison because she was in a drunk driving accident and someone was greatly injured and she has been spending time in prison for that. And one day, these this lawyer and another woman come and tell her she can go out on parole as long as she agrees to come um, restore this mural that this woman's father had. Um, they're opening an art gallery. Her father had passed away in his will. He requests, he specifies that Morgan is the one who should come and restore this mural. She took some art classes, but she's never taken restoration classes. She's never done anything like this before. She's got to learn really quickly because they're on a deadline. In the 1940 timeline, we follow Anna, who is the painter of this mural. Now, when Morgan starts recovering this mural, they discover some strange, odd aspects to it, like things that don't seem to fit with the mural. The mural is supposed to represent this town, Edenton, North Carolina. And... In the mural, there is a man holding an axe with blood dripping off of it. There is a woman looking into a compact, but in the mirror of the compact is a man leaning against a tree. There are just some odd situations. There's skulls in the houses along the mill, the mill houses as part of the painting. So there's all these little odd things. And so Morgan becomes more and more invested and interested in finding out who was Anna, where did what happened to her, why did she paint these things into the mural. And so along with Morgan trying to discover who Anna is, we are learning who Anna is and the story that happened in 1940. It was so well done. I love how these two storylines wove together. I love both of them equally. Sometimes when there's two, you kind of relate more with one than the other. I was interested very much in Anna and her story and what happened to her. And I was very much also interested in Morgan and her discovery of what was going on with Anna and what happened to her. I thought there was a lovely, <laughs> lovely, I thought there was a, a fantastic surprise kind of at the end, toward the end, little, not exactly a plot twist, but a little surprise that that I thought was pretty cool. I didn't really see that coming, so that was fun. Yeah, I really, I just, Diane Chamberlain, like it's just as long as some of these other books I read, but I could fly, I fly through it because I just can't put it down. It was so good.
Very, very good. Five stars. Another five star read for me was The Beautiful Mystery by Louise Penny. I randomly picked this up as an audiobook because I've listened to all of these in this series on audio so far. This is book eight in the Armand Gamache, Three Pines, Chief Inspector Gamache novels by Louise Penny. Uh, this one is a little different because it does not take place in Three Pines. We're at a monastery that is not exactly part of a Catholic diocese. It's almost hidden in a way. And these monks that live there are all fantastic singers. They've been almost recruited for different reasons to come and be at this monastery and sing the Gregorian chant or plain song. I think because I love music and the history of music, and I just think it's so interesting, the musical aspect of this was very intriguing to me and, and the religious side of things too. And just, it's also like closed mystery. So one day, one of the monks dies, is murdered in a garden and Armand Gamache and his right-hand man, Jean Guy, show up to figure out what happened. I love this series because each individual book has its own mystery, but there's this also this there but there's also this overarching story dealing with Armand Gamache and and the Sûreté, the police department in Quebec that has gone through the thread of that has gone through all of these. So this is a series that you do need to read from the beginning because although each of the mysteries is pretty standalone, that overarching story continues through all of them and I love it so much. And this one kind of left off. I wouldn't say it's a cliffhanger, but it was a heartbreaking moment and I'm very in interested in picking up book nine soon. <laughs> I I just really loved this. I love, I love mysteries and I forget how much I love them until I read another one. Oh, so good, so good. I can never figure them out. <laughs> I always try to see if I can pick up on any clues or whatnot, and I and I can't. I finished Anne of Green Gables. Actually, I think I finished this on May 1st. This or May 2nd. No, I did that on Saturday. Katie from Life Between Words had been reading this in March, and I was kind of holding out hope for her. If she ever does pick back up where we left off, I will still continue the ending with her reading it because she did such a great job, but I wanted to finish because I just love it so much. And I do... I do love it. This is by Ella Montgomery, about a young girl who is an orphan and gets adopted by this brother-sister duo, Matthew and Marilla, who are wonderful. And I feel like every time I read this, as I get older, I have so much more of a love and respect for Marilla. I think when I was younger, I kind of thought she was a hard, strict, lack of love, all of these things, which in a way she was. But Ella Montgomery just writes these little gem lines that show us into the heart of Marilla that I notice more and more as each time I read. And I just love her. I love, I mean, I've always loved Matthew because he's a gem. And I found as I was finishing up the end of this, I would read, <laughs> I would read sections knowing all the things that are to come because I have read this quite a few times. <laughs> but knowing all that's to come, I found myself crying at parts that weren't sad, but I just know... I just knew what was coming and it just was so beautiful. I love this book so much. So I'm glad that I read that again. I think it was my fifth or sixth time reading that book. I don't know, so many times. And the final book that I'm gonna talk about was my patron book club book for the month of April. We read The Book of Lost Names by Kristen Harmel. This was another five-star read for me. So good. I love this so much. In this book, we follow Eva, who is a young woman and going to college in Paris, right in the midst of World War II. She's a Jewish woman. She's warned one day that there's going to be this big roundup of Jews and to be careful. Stroke of luck, her and her mom were at a neighbor's house taking care of the kids for an evening when, when the soldiers came and took her father away. Eva realizes very quickly they need to get out of Dodge. She forges uh, identification papers for her and her mother and makes some for her father as well and they get out as quick as they can that evening. They get on a bus and they go. They land in this town in the south of France and they're thinking, she's thinking that, that her and her mother are going to escape over the mountains into Switzerland and be safe. However, in this little town there is a ring of the resistance and they need a forger. When somebody saw her identification papers that she had forged they knew she was the one that they've been looking for. And she has to make a decision. Is she going to stay and help or is she going to get her mother away? Her mother had sunk into this deep grief, um, almost loses track of reality, treats Eva horribly, blames her, 
when obviously it's not her fault at all. Totally s treats her horribly, but Eva decides to stay and become part of the resistance and forges hundreds of, of identification papers and other papers to help people escape out of France. It was so interesting to learn about forging. As we were talking in our book club the other day, I realized we learn so much detail about the forging um, aspect of, of, of Eva's story, which she's not based on a real person, but there were female forgers that Kristen Harmel researched. I mean, she researched a lot about forging and what that entailed and all of that. Um, and there were a number of women who that was their job during during World War II to help people escape. They took that on. And I loved how World War II, like all the other things that were going on, um, we kind of see glimpses of them, but we really take a deep dive into the forging aspect of things. So cool. So in this story, Eva, we meet her first when she's an old woman working at a library. She sees a picture in the newspaper of this book and immediately books a flight to Germany to go see it in person. We learn throughout the story that this book was a book that she and Remy, another forger, would put the names of children in particular, of people that they were um, helping to escape, put the true names of these people so that they weren't being erased um, and their identity would be known. And then maybe in hopes that someday they could be tracked down and, and told their, their story. It was just so good. I thought the writing was beautiful. There were so many lines in here that I underlined and wrote down. And I absolutely want to read more from Kristen Harmel. I was just, I was just very captivated by this one as well. There was a lot to talk about. There was a romance in the midst of it, a kind of forbidden romance between Eva, who's Jewish and a Catholic boy. Um, there was the whole situation with the mom being horrible, the dad being taken away, and how can we, can we save him and, and get him back somehow? Um, there was a priest, Father Clement, who was just amazing and kind of leading part of this resistance movement and a love of books and story was in here as well. It just was so good. It was so good. I I really loved this book. And if you haven't read it, I would definitely recommend picking this one up. And that is it. That is the rest of the books that I read in the month of April. It was a fabulous reading month. It makes me excited for May. In my little tiny TBR, I have a couple others that I've already started in the other room, but this pile is sometimes really big of a TBR. So I'm I'm excited to see what happens in May, if it, if it becomes as good of a reading month as April was or not. We'll see. I guess we'll see. But I do know a lot of these need to get back to the library. <laughs> I would love to chat with you guys down in the comments. Have you read any of these books? Are any of them moving up on your TBR based on what I just talked about? Are any of them coming off your TBR? That's a possibility too. <laughs> Uh, but I love talking with you guys down in the comments, so let's chat down there. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be talking to you in another video very soon. Bye.